Welcome to Lecture Online, and now let's see some examples on how to simplify rational expressions. So we have five examples here, one, two, three, four, five. Let's start with the first one. Notice that we probably need to factor that first before we can simplify it, so let's see if this is factorable. Um, the numerator can probably be factored, and it looks like the denominator is probably factorable. All right, so we have an x squared here. That means we need an x and an x. Everything is positive, a plus and a plus. I'm looking for two numbers. When I multiply, I get 8. When I add, I get 6. 2 plus 4, that will make sense. So we need a 2 and a 4. That's a bad-looking x there. Let me try it again. Okay. In the denominator, we have an x and an x. Everything is positive, so two pluses. I look, I'm looking for two numbers. When I multiply, I get a 4. When I add, I get a 5. So 4 and 1 looks like the right ones. There we go. Now you can see, since this is multiplied, I can cancel out this one with that one, and I'm left with x plus 2 divided by x plus 1. So that was very straightforward. On the next one here, we probably need to use some similar technique, but first of all, I want to get rid of this division symbol here. I'm going to tur turn into a, a multiplication by switching the second fraction around, by taking the inverse of the second fraction. So this can be written as x minus 1 divided by x squared plus x minus 12 times the inverse of that, which is x squared minus 4x plus 3 divided by x squared plus x minus 6. Now we can go ahead and see what I can factor. Okay, so this becomes equal to x minus 1. The denominator would be, uh, let's see here, two binomials, x and x. This means 1 is plus, 1 is minus, because otherwise when I multiply, I can't get a negative. I'm looking for two numbers. When I multiply, I get minus 12. When I add, I get plus 1. That means that the positive number is one bigger than the negative number, so plus 4 and minus 3 should work times the numerator here when I simplify, or first I want to factor, I'm not ready to simplify yet, x and x. I have a minus here and a plus there, that means they're both minus. When I multiply, I get 3. When I add them, I get 4. So 3 and 1 looks like the right two numbers. And in the denominator, I end up with two binomials, x and x. This is negative, that's positive, that means 1 is positive, 1 is negative. When I multiply, I get minus 6. When I add, I get a plus 1. That would be a positive 3 and a negative 2. That works. Positive 3, negative 2. When I multiply, I get negative 6. When I add, I get plus 3. So now, what can I simplify? Since everything is multiplied, even though I have a multiplication sign there and two fractions, I could write that all over a single rational fraction. Uh, let's see here. We have an x minus 3 and x minus 3, so that cancels out. I have an, um, well, looks like that's it. Those are the only two binomials I can cancel. So what I end up with here is an x minus 1 quantity squared divided by, um, I have an x plus 4 times an x plus 3 times an x minus 2. And that's it. That's as far as I can simplify it. That would be the end result of that simplification effort. All right. Next example, coming over here, notice that this is really the same thing as here, but written in a fractional format. It's this divided by that, so I can go ahead and rewrite that as this multiplied times the inverse of that. So this can be written as x divided by x squared plus 2x plus 1, multiplied times the inverse of that, which would be x plus 1 divided by x to the fifth. And now I'm going to factor this, see I can simplify it a little bit more, so we have x times x plus 1 divided by, here this would be x plus 1 times x plus 1 times x to the fifth. Notice, just to show you that this is as if it's a single uh, fraction, I can simply write that over a single fraction, um, over a single denominator like that, because this is multiplied, this is not added, so this is exactly the same as that, I can use that rule. Now I can simplify some things, I have an x plus 1, I can simplify, and this x can cancel out one of those, that becomes x to the 4th, so this becomes 1 over x to the 4th times x plus 1, Oop. and that should be a parenthesis, like that, and that would be the simplified form of that example. Coming over here, notice that I'm not multiplying, I'm adding, 
And when I'm adding fractions, I should have the same denominator. Since I don't have the same denominator, I have to find the common denominator, which in this case is simply the product of the two denominators. So what I need to do is multiply the left fraction by the top and the bottom by the denominator here, and I have to multiply the second fraction, top and bottom, by the denominator here. So this becomes 3 times x, oh, 3 divided by x minus 5 times, and let me use a different color, looking for my red pen right here, times x minus 2 times x minus 2. Notice when I cancel those out, I end up exactly what I started with. Do the same for the second fraction. So this becomes plus x plus 4 divided by x minus 2. But then both the top and the bottom are going to be multiplied by the denominator of the other fraction. So it would be x minus 5 times x minus 5. Now notice that both denominators are exactly the same. x minus 2 times x minus 5. So now they have the same common denominator. I can now write those two over the same common denominator. So this can now be written as 3 times x minus 2 plus x plus 4 times x minus 5, all divided by x minus 2 times x minus 5. Now, to simplify that further, I need to multiply out what I have in the numerator. So this can be written as 3x minus 6 plus x squared. That would be minus 5 plus 4 uh, minus x and minus 20, all divided by x minus 2 times x minus 5. And then the last step would be to combine any common terms. So that would be equal to x squared. I have a 3x minus x, that would be plus 2x. And I have a minus 20 minus 6 would be minus 26, all divided by x minus 2 times x minus 5. Now, it could be possible that that last term is factorable. But that means I need to find a product that gives me minus 26. And when I add them together, I get plus 2. Hmm, 13 and 2. Hmm, nope, that's it. That's as far as I can go. I cannot factor that anymore. So that's the simplest form of that example. And finally, we get something that looks like this. The best way to take care of that is to look at this kind of complex fraction right here. And notice that the denominator here is x. So if I multiply the numerator and the denominator by x, for this fraction right here, I can simplify that a lot better. That's a special technique. So this can be written as x divided by x times the fraction 1 over 1 minus 1 over x. I still have, of course, the minus 1 right there, but that's not going to be affected by this because there's a minus sign there. So multiplying the left fraction, I get x divided by x times 1 is x x times minus 1 over x would be minus x over x minus 1. And of course, x minus x over x is simply x minus 1. So this would be x divided by x minus 1 minus 1. Now I have to combine those two. Notice I need the same common denominator. I have an x minus 1 here, and this can be written basically as 1 over 1. So I need a common denominator. That means the right fraction, I can write that as x minus 1 divided by x minus 1 like that. Notice now the denominators are the same, which means I can now write this as x minus the quantity x minus 1 over the common denominator of x minus 1. I can now get rid of those parentheses. So this is equal to x minus x plus 1 over x minus 1. The x's cancel out. This is 1 over x minus 1. And that would be the final answer of that fraction. And that's how we do that. There's some nice examples of how to simplify rational expressions.